Today we acknowledge that we are standing on Treaty 6 territory to the north of the Red Deer River and Treaty 7 territory to the south of the Red Deer River. We acknowledge and give thanks to all the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. I'm Nicole Buchanan, Chair of the Board of Trustees for Red Deer Public Schools. This year, Remembrance Day ceremonies look different due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Normally, we are all gathered in our gymnasiums as a school community, but we are thankful that we can still come together as a division to remember those who fought and continue to fight for our freedom. Remembrance Day is important because we need to acknowledge the courage and sacrifice of those who served their country and acknowledge what they fought hard to achieve. We must remember, as not only did they fight, but 100,000 Canadians lost their lives. They died for us, for their homes and families and friends, for a collection of traditions they cherished and a future they believed in. They died for Canada. Thank you to our students and staff in all of our schools for contributing to this Remembrance Day program. Not only will this be shown to our Red Deer Public students, staff, and families, but we look forward to sharing this video with our entire community, lest we forget. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. One of the last places in Europe to be liberated was Holland. Many of the soldiers who brought freedom to that country were Canadians. Addie Gentink and Anne Husing grew up during the war and lived for years under Nazi occupation. For the Husing family, their nightmare only ended when they were liberated by Canadian soldiers. Here's their story. I was nine years old when the war started. The first couple of years were, and I remember that well, they were very quiet. I was uh, seven. Tenth of May, and then we saw in the distance, we saw a man coming on a horse, when, when, when behind him was another man, and behind there was a whole row of soldiers marching away. That was the first thing what we saw from the, from the Germans. In the beginning, everything was fine. But then in 42, that I remember, then um, they started to pick up the Jews. I still see myself sitting there with Esther, was her name. We were, in, in, we were talking to each other, and the next day she was gone. Now. Where is she going? Where, where are they? They were playing games with us. You know, we had to be in the home at 8 o'clock at night. Everybody was supposed to be inside. I remember we were all outside, and then my dad said, he said, we better hurry up because it's close to 8 o'clock. 
And then they came and they said, it's eight o'clock. And my dad said, no. And my brother said, no, it's not eight o'clock yet. It is a few minutes before eight o'clock. They just slammed them to the ground, you know. I, I never forget that, that it, it was so mean. In the front room, we had a Jewish man. We never knew that. We never have known that till after the war was over. For my mom and dad, it was so dangerous. I, I, I still amaze, amazes me that they keep it, kept it quiet. My brother was uh, eight years older than I am, and he was picked up and he was uh, put into a slave labor camp, not a concentration camp, a slave labor camp. Then the fear started to come, mm -hmm. and then the underground started, yeah. and that was very, very important for us that the underground was there for the Jews, of course. All of a sudden, you uh, discovered that you couldn't trust each other anymore. Yeah. On the outskirts from Hofwein, there were a row of houses, and the paras, para troops from France they were planning to land there. And the Germans got, got to know that. And they shot all these people from, from that whole row of houses. We shot them all, 21. My dad's cousin was in there with his wife and three kids. It was just before the liberation of Hohofe. Now, who, I, as a child, how do you react on that? But when these tanks came in, <laughs> that was fantastic. All those guys on the top and all the girls yelling and screaming. I have never seen anything so fantastic that all the flags came out, red, white and blue. It was one big party. Fantastic. And my mom said to me, here you have some eggs. You take this, these ones and you go to one of those guys that are on these tanks and you ask for chocolate. And that's what I did. And I was standing there, <laughs> you know. You can do what you want, you can say what you want, right? It was quite something. Liberation Day is a public holiday in the Netherlands, celebrated each year on May 5th to mark the end of the occupation by Nazi Germany. To this day, the people of Holland celebrate those who gave their lives for freedom and honor those who saved them. That when you see that, that famous pit, the picture that they are landing on the beach, that always makes me cry that I think, here are those young guys and they just go to their own death, you know? Cemeteries across Holland commemorate Canadian soldiers who fought to liberate Holland. On Remembrance Day, we remember all who served in the fight to bring about freedom. The Children's Library downtown, that was the first armory. They had as many as 250 soldiers training and living in that building. The big brick building just immediately south of the cemetery here, it was converted in the first war to veterans who came back with what in those days they called shell shock. North of 55th Street where Thurber is located, where Camille J. LaRouge is located, the Memorial Center, the Christian School. That's an old military training camp. In the Second World War, there were up to 1,800 men and women that were training there at one time. Just think of that change from a sleepy, quiet prairie town to suddenly a place that's overcrowded with military people, even though you're not on the front line of a war. The Armory's building is still on 55th Street. 
That still is the headquarters for the militia in Red Deer, Department of National Defense. The Harvard training was done at Penhold. Uh, you know, that was a training base in the Second World War, but also during the Korean conflict and uh, through the Cold War. When you first come in the main gates, on the right-hand side, there's a small cluster of World War I graves. There's one area that are largely people from the Second World War. There's 36 graves of young airmen who were training at Penhold during the war. There are people here from Korea and some that were lost their lives while they were on peacekeeping missions. The Cenotaph is in honor of everyone who served in any war and also as a peacekeeper. They hired a man who was a veteran, Major Norbury, who had been in the trenches, and he was commissioned to carve uh, the unknown soldier looking west towards the sunset, but also the train station where so many of the people had left to go off overseas to fight in the war. A lot of them never came back. It was created in 1922 in the aftermath of the First World War. Yet a small town that lost 118 young men in the First World War, so it's been a searing experience. If you go to the Veterans Park that's around that, it gives the story over the 120 years of Red Deer's involvement in war uh, and peacekeeping. It gives pictures, it gives history, it talks about the units, talks about some of the people, and talks about the impact to our community. You know, he knew that they were young men uh, when they died, but all he could think of was when he heard that they passed away as this little eight, 10, 12 year old kid sitting in the classroom, all full of energy and excitement about life and what was ahead of them.
in Flanders Fields by John McRae. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved. And now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up the quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands, we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Ocean d'honneur, par John McRae. Ocean d'honneur, les coquelicots sont parsemés de l'eau en l'eau. Auprès des croix et dans l'espace, les alouettes devenues las. Mère la chante au sifflement. Des abusés. Nous sommes morts. Nous qui songions la veille encore. À nos amis, à nos parents. C'est nous qui repons ici. Au champ d'honneur. À vous, gens désabusés. À vous de porter l'oriflamme. Et de garder au fond de l'âme. Le goût de vivre en liberté. Acceptez le défi, sinon... Les coquelicots se fonderont. Au champ d'honneur. Honoring the students of Red Deer Schools who served in World War I. Charles Alford, Frank Allen, Alexander Black, William Arthur Bauer, Ivan Merle Fisher, Harold Waldo Eustace, Edward E. Mears, Kendall Miller, Harold Muldrew. Frederick Pamely. Desmond St. Clair George. Clifford E. Tyner. Albert E. Usherwood. Honoring the students of Red Deer Schools who served in World War II. Wilson Cameron. Bernard Carroll, Cyril Karskadden, William Connell, Robert Curry, Matt Dunham, Robert Ellenwood, 
Bruce Farrow, Robert Forrester. Arthur Gordon, Alan Groom, Clarence Hadley, George Hamilton, Kenneth Hopfe, Robert Johnson. Jack Kirkpatrick, George Langton, Raymond Leonard. Meckel Lind, Benson Long, Fred Lynch. David MacArthur, Max Mayberry, David McCullough. James Mowring, Vincent Nelson, Samuel Wick Nichols. Alan Opie, Leslie Petrie, Lester Plank. John Simpson, Werner Sinclair, Ted Stevenson. Duncan Sutherland, Alan Van Slyke. Eddie White, Jack White.